Hi, this is Ted Patterson of Critical Path Training. In this video how-to tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with the SharePoint Developer Tools in Visual Studio 2010. As you'll see, these new tools allow you to be far more productive when developing for SharePoint Foundation or SharePoint Server 2010. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'll do is bring up a local test site. One thing to remember about the SharePoint tools is that as you start working with sites to test your code, they have to be on the local farm. Now I'm going to start up Visual Studio and as I start up Visual Studio 2010, I'm going to choose to start it with the Run as Administrator option because there are some debugging scenarios that require you to, to be started as Administrator. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll create a new project. And to work with SharePoint 2010, there is a new set of project templates under the SharePoint 2010 folder. And note they're available for both C Sharp and Visual Basic. Now there are lots of different project types, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create mine based on the empty SharePoint project. So we're going to create a new project named Wingtip Dev Project 1. Now, as you create a new project, a wizard asks you for two pieces of information. First, what is the URL to your local site that you're going to use for testing and debugging? And do you want to test and deploy as a farm solution or as a sandbox solution? So I'll pick farm solution. Now, as we see this particular project right here, while all Visual Studio projects have a properties and a references node, SharePoint projects are unique in that they have a features node and a package node. The features node is where the features are going to go when we create them. The package node has information and files that allow Visual Studio when you choose one of these SharePoint specific commands like deploy or package, it has to basically take the project and build its output as a WSP file. Now, let's go ahead and look behind the scenes for a second. If I go down to my demo and into my project directory, note that, let's go back to Visual Studio and we'll choose build. When I choose the build command, it basically builds the DLL for me. However, if I come back and I run the SharePoint specific package command, it not only is going to build the DLL, it will then also take the DLL and other files and compile them into the solution package, the WSP file that is the output of this SharePoint project. Now let's go and do some things. Now my project's going to contain a feature and in some scenarios I might right click and say add feature and that's going to add a feature for me. Notice that the feature it creates is named Feature 1. And so when features are created, you probably want to rename them right away to something different. So if I call this My Feature, note that we have a Feature Designer window. And then also down here, when the Feature Designer window is active, there is a property sheet that shows you more than you can see on the Feature Designer. Now it turns out, in most cases, like the scenario I'm going to show you, you don't have to create your own features. I'm going to right click and delete the feature. Because the next thing I want to do is I want to create a SharePoint project item. So I right click and I choose add. And before I do this, realize that there are no features in my project right now. But when I choose to create an item that requires a feature, I'll create a web part. And we'll call this the hello part. Note that not only did it create the SharePoint project item with three source files, it also created a new feature. And if I look at the feature, notice that because it's a feature for a web part that's going to push out the web part description file, it knows to scope it at the site collection level by saying scope equals site. Now we'll go ahead and we'll rename this wingtip dev project. And that's all I'm going to do with this feature. So one of the nice things about this set of tools is that you don't have to 
deal with the feature if it can do all the required things behind the scenes. So for my web part, there are three different source files. The first one is the .web part file, which people call the web part description file or the web part template file. This has some information that the user is going to see. So we'll say the hello part and we'll put my description inside here. And that's all I'm going to change in this first source file. So I'm going to save the .web part file. And then secondly, I'm going to open up the elements.xml file. I'm going to open up that file because this is the file that is used to upload the web part description file to the target site collections web part gallery. And there is a group property, which is really the category property. And the default value of custom isn't very good. So we're going to switch that to wingtip web parts. And now that I've made that change, I'll save this file and close it down. And the last thing we have to do is put an implementation behind our web part itself. Now, I'll use a pretty simple implementation. I'm going to create a protected field based on the ASP.NET label control. And inside of the create child controls method, we'll call new to create a new label. And once I create the label control, we'll go ahead and we'll set its text property to high from the hello web part. Very exciting stuff. And then finally, when you add child controls to your web part, you want to explicitly add them to the web parts controls collection. Now I've got enough of an implementation where we can actually demo this. Okay, so let's go ahead, save and close. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to run some SharePoint specific commands. You've already seen what the package command does. It builds the output into a solution package, a WSP file. Now we're going to run the deploy command, which after it builds the solution package, will actually deploy it on the local farm. So I'm going to bring up the output window. Whenever you run the deploy command, you want to see what's going on. So with the output window showing, we'll go ahead and we'll choose deploy. And so as you can see, the first thing it does is it bounces the IS application pool in the web app where my application's running. And then it deploys the solution package. And one other nice thing it does is it takes that feature and it automatically activates it. And that's a development time convenience. Now, since it's a farm feature, every time I do a deploy, it's going to bounce the IS worker process. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh my site. But now, if I choose Edit Page and I choose Add Web Part, I should be able to go down and find, remember that was my group, what comes out as a category. There's my web part description file saying the hello web part. There's my web part. There's the description. So now we'll go ahead and add this. And now that I've added the web part to the page, let's go ahead and get out of edit view back to regular display view. I can see what the web part looks like. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the browser for a second and come back to Visual Studio. And what I'm going to do here, let's make the output window a little bit smaller. Let's bring up our source file. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint. And now what I'm going to do is hit the F5 key. I hit the F5 key. And what's going to happen is it's going to go through all the different things I've shown you so far. It rebuilds the solution package after retracting and removing the previous version, after reinstalling, redeploying, it then activates the feature and directs to the browser that particular page and attaches the debugger. So I can automatically now single step through my code. And as I'm running inside here, you know, all the things that are available to you as a Visual Studio developer, you know, including being able to look at different variables inside. 
you know, are all available to you. I'll go ahead and press the F5 key. And when I press the F5 key, well, now I'm back inside the site. Now, this site is basically um, the browser instance has been brought up by the debugger. So if I quit, what happens is I fall out of debug mode back inside here. And the one last thing I want to show you is that if I go to properties of my SharePoint project, there's a SharePoint tab. And if I go down further inside this, they have something saying auto retract after debugging. And the idea is when you close the browser, debugging stops and they basically start the process of retracting your solution package. So the next time you hit the F5 key, it's going to be faster.